Hi there, it's Hugh T with part two of my cancer saga. This is the dreaded phone call. So from those of you who watched my first one, um, it was the needle aspiration where they had took a biopsy from a nodular on my neck. It was five needle pokes that I had and they told me they would call me back in two weeks with the results and this is four days later. So it's January 27, 2011. I get a message on my cell phone from the doctor's office saying um, we have an appointment scheduled for you on Friday, January 28th. You need to make it to this appointment. The doctor needs to speak with you. Please give us a call back and let us know that you can make it. As soon as I heard that phone call, I knew right away I had cancer. All I'm thinking is I was supposed to get a phone call two weeks later with the results over the phone and now I have to again drive which I hate an hour and 15 minutes in to see the doctor to speak with him my heart sunk I knew I had cancer what else could it be so I called my husband and I let him know um, what the doc well, what the message had said I told him I had already called back and confirmed that I would be there and he immediately started researching everything that he could on different type of thyroid cancers. Um, the most common cancer is um, a papillary tumor and this is about 75 percent of the cancers are usually this one and this one is typically it arises out of like a re an irregular cyst mass um, otherwise a normal normal tissue and um, this one has a very high survival rate so if you have this one thank your lucky stars best one to have I can't tell you how many doctors that um, I've spoke with that have said if I had to have a cancer this would be the cancer I would have we don't ever say cancer is cured but as far as treated this is the one you're gonna wanna have um, if you ever have cancer and it's the, perf I guess, I don't want to say preferred, but this would be the one that they would all say they, they would have. It's the most treated. Um, so a couple things with this one. Um, it usually occurs in people that are between the age of, between 30 and 50. Of course, it could be younger, but typically these are the, the common things with it. So 36. Um, so I'm in that category. Females, it's usually a three to one ratio, so female, so I got that one too. Um, a good prognosis is usually if it's one and a half centimeters or smaller. Now mine is four centimeters, so I'm a little bit concerned with that one. Um, now it accounts for 85% of all cancers due to radiation exposure. So like right now there's a big thing the date here is, uh, what is it, March 21st, so there's a lot of stuff going on in Japan um, with the nuclear power plants and that type of thing. That's what they're meaning as far as like radiation expo uh, exposure, stuff like that. That contributes to 85% of this. Um, that's usually how, you, how you, you come across it. I've never been exposed to any type of radiation that I can think of. Um, they asked me all those questions, so I have no clue how mine turned into that. Um, what else? So overall, pretty good. That's the one you're going to want to have. Um, the second one, which is not too great, but I guess it's not the worst, it's follicular carcinomas. And this is the second most common. Um, it's about 17% of the cancers are this cancer. Um, and it's usually more aggressive than the papillary. And um, it occurs slightly in older group of people, so usually between 40 and 60 years old, um, or the age group, and of course, again, females, three to one ratio. Um, this one here is a little bit more aggressive. And what else on this one? Um, this disease, it typically, the tumor does not um, concentrate iodine as well as in young patients. So I don't know if that's important or not, but I was just reading this little piece of paper. Um, the spread to the lymph nodes is usually uncommon, so it usually doesn't spread into the, the lymph nodes on this one. And um, it's invasive, so the vascular 
the vas the vascular structures or the veins um, they're invasive they usually go into other things um, within the thyroid gland and that's usually common um, overall cure rate on this one is about 95 percent if you have a small lesion so again minus four centimeters so we're hoping that we don't have that one and then there is medulla, medulla, medullary tumors this is the third most common it's only five to eight percent of the people that have thyroid cancer will have this one um, this one's not too good you really don't want this one um, it usually occurs in females of course over males um, this one is spread into the organs um, spread into the, the lymph nodes and um, it's also spread into the bones if you catch it late in the bones the liver the brain um, basically this is why you don't want to have this one and what else with this one it's just not a good one to have. The worst one, which I hoped and prayed that I didn't have, it's anaplastic tumors. This one only really occurs in 1% of people. And with this one, it's usually if you're 65 or older, that's the age group that it affects. It very rarely affects young patients. Um, and this one is more common in males for some reason. I don't know why, but it is. And typically, it is uh, rapidly growing in your neck. So those are kind of the, the a very quick overview of the four different types. So you'll definitely have to do some more research because we could be reading stuff all day long on all the different types. So now we've researched, and I know which one I, I guess I would prefer to have, which would be the papillary carcinoma cancer. And so I go in on Friday, January the 28th. I get there like super early. I think I got there like at 12 because I was just a wreck. And um, I don't get in until like 1.30 to actually see him because, of course, like I said, endocrinologist, very busy. Um, and I remember sitting down in the doctor's chair, and he walks in, and I had been waiting. God, it seemed like forever, but it really wasn't. I mean, at this time now, it's about almost 1.40 something. And he sits down, and exactly at... 148 is when I found out I had papillary cancer and what he basically said he looked at me and he said we're gonna need to remove that lump in your neck and I asked him what it was and he said you have papillary cancer and like I said I try to be a big girl so I didn't shed a tear um, again everything had moved so quick so I didn't have anybody that could go with me um, I didn't really have a shoulder to lean on couple of friends I could have called, but I just didn't really want to inconvenience them. Um, so I just kind of went alone. Wish I would have had somebody go with me now that I look back on it. Um, all I could think was, thank God it was that one. It could have been a lot worse. So I tried to be really, really positive about it. Um, he gave me some literature about surgery and what the next step was going to be. And basically, my, my next words out of my mouth, once I found out I had cancer, I said, all right, when do we get it removed? What do I need to do? I wanted it out of my neck as soon as I could get it out of there. I was ready to go. So he gave me a referral. And of course, like I said, I don't like to drive. So in the town that I live in, we have a really, really good surgeon. And I had seen him once before for just you know, for something little. And um, I called him, I made an appointment, and that was now February 3rd that I saw him. And he was a really great doctor. He actually went over um, how the procedure would go. He talked about the incision, you can see right here. He talked about the incision, how it would look. He talked about my thyroid gland and that you have four parathyroids. Um, so you have two on the top and you have two on the bottom. And then, um, you know, your voice box, the nerve that goes down. And he said, you know, as far as the parathyroid and your voice box, those are two things that we do not want to, hopefully we don't mess with. So talked about the side effects. Um, if the parathyroid got damaged, he said I would have low calcium issues. Didn't think anything about that. Um, if the nerves for the voice box got injured, I could lose my voice permanently. 
that was a little bit scary. I don't know if I was really quite ready for that one. So you can see I have a scar and I'm speaking quite well, I hope. So that didn't happen. So now the next step was, when are we going to get it removed? He said, we'll give you a call next day with what your surgery date's going to be. Um, I get a phone call the next day. Surgery date is February the 11th. So as you can see, the time frame on everything moved really fast. January 24th was whenever I got my needle aspiration. January 28th, found out I had papillary cancer. And then February 11th, I am going into surgery. So stay tuned to hear about what happens with surgery.